with a new expansion that means a new updated guide for my practical healing this is an updated version of my previous guide and we'll be going over all things beginner healing and white mage so new players can get a feel for the job if you are a beginner or a casual player that is hesitant on playing healer classes, I'm going to provide you a practical healing guide from level 1 to endgame. So watching this video in its entirety will give you the bigger overall picture. This is not a pep talk or encouraging words. This is a step-by-step -step guide in order to build confidence and begin understanding the role. These are my personal opinions as always, and this is not an optimal guide for savage or extreme content. I need to disclaim that for all those who are looking to be healer elitist in the comment section. As always, we're operating under the intention of being as helpful as possible in terms of healers, and that means DPSing, healing, and providing mitigations and buffs. Without further ado, let's jump into the main tips that you need to know. With the release of Endwalker, you'll probably be healing more in all content depending on the setup of your group. I have just noticed that it seems in all content near your level, there is a bigger gap of leeway with healing. So just make sure you have your screen and UI set up to where you can see the tank's health as easily as possible. Always be casting, ABC, which is the main theme of all jobs. You do not want to just be standing around. You can be healing, damaging, or dotting your enemies. You should always have a GCD window rolling, which means a damage spell, AOE damage spell, or healing GCD spell, albeit not often as we want to focus on using our off global cooldowns as much as possible. Gearing is more important now with the downscaling and make sure that you do not have pieces of gear falling behind. In the description, there'll be a how to gear from 1 to 89, so you can watch that one after this one to learn how to keep your pieces of gear up to date. The reason gear is so important as it will affect healing and the damage you do as well as the damage you take. Lucid Dreaming is going to be your best friend now as White Mage. In Endwalker, White Mage is sorely lacking in MP regenerative abilities comparatively to the other three healing jobs. You will treat Lucid Dreaming as a regular skill on your toolkit to keep on cooldown during battle. If you use this ability regularly, you will have zero problems with MP in a click of a button, so make sure to have this somewhere you can always see the cooldown. The last thing I want to mention is that it's still true to this day, but Cure 2 is always better than Cure 1. Once you get Cure 2, you should always prioritize this GCD healing if you're going to use one. Should you take Cure 1 off your hotbar? No, because if you sink down, you'll need this ability if Cure 2 is not available. Even if you're playing on controller, I'm able to fit every single ability on my two cross hotbar setup. That video will be in the description box as well. The why is Cure 2 is a better heal in less time. If you have to use one Cure 2 or two Cure 1s, then you want to spend less time healing and more time damaging. The free Cure proc chance is so low on Cure 1 that it doesn't really make it worth cast for just that ability alone. Let's jump into 1 to 29 content. At this point, White Mage is like any other healer job, just really straightforward. Dungeon pools will look something like this. Tank pulls first mob, you'll begin with dotting each enemy as the tank is running. Once the tank stops, you will then be casting stone and just healing as necessary. Make sure Lucid Dreaming is rolling as soon as you're losing MP. This will start getting you in the habit of making sure Lucid Dreaming is on cooldown at all times during battle. You also have Medica, which is right now your only AoE heal, so just use as necessary if you need to heal multiple people. Let's move on to 30 to 49 content. This content is a little bit smoother as you get some of your base utilities here, but we still don't have our job abilities until level 52. Let's go over abilities first. We have Presence of Mind, to which will increase your spellcast time and recast time. So you'll be pairing this with your single target damage ability stone or your AOE damage ability holy. You can also use this in a pinch for some really fast GCD healing, but we wouldn't hold on to it just for that reason alone. We also have regen, which is your go-to healing ability that will be applied to the tank at all times during battle. This ability should always be your first ability after a tank pulls a trash mob as a regen is a total of 1500 potency over 18 seconds. You have Cure 3 which has gotten some improvements but can still be pretty hard to utilize if everyone is spread out as the radius is very small. Basically, you can cast this on you or someone else for 600 potency heal, but they have to be close together in order to benefit. 
If you need a heal everybody, I wouldn't necessarily prioritize using this over Medica because Medica has a far wider range than Cure 3 with just a 200 potency difference. Since we know that DPS and tanks are running around the arena like chickens with their heads cut off, I usually would prioritize Medica first. But Cure 3 can be useful for maybe stack markers where everyone's on top of each other and you'll know you'll get the benefit out of it. We also have one of the most memed abilities of Final Fantasy XIV, which is Holy. This is your AoE damage ability paired with the stun that will stun enemies multiple times when used in succession. Remember that enemies not attacking your tank is a form of mitigation and you can basically seize all attacks on your tanks for around 7 seconds. Tank pulls will look something like this. Tank pulls trash mob. You will regen the tank, dot your enemies as your tank is running. As soon as your tank stops, you can reapply regen if it falls off. Use holy and heal as needed. Now your first holy will last about four seconds to which your second holy cast will overlap. If your enemies are stunned, it will not refresh the timer. The first stun needs to fall off completely before the second one will be applied. So if you want to wait to regen the tank the second time after your first holy, not overlap the stun effect, you can. We will have better skills to use coming up, but at this level, it's not too difficult as long as you keep an eye on how many enemies there are as the ticks of damage can really pile up quickly. Ticks of damage just is how often the enemy applies damage to your tank, which you'll get used to seeing as you play more. Moving on to 50 plus content. At this point, you'll have the basis for what dungeon pools and boss pools will look like, and this doesn't really change. All we do now is add in the new skills and job abilities that we get into the base rotation and upgrade to be more efficient. I will also have a separate video for a controller setup when all of these practical guys are done and those will be linked in the description box so you can watch that after finishing this video. At level 50 we get two great abilities that you'll be utilizing a lot which is Benediction and Medica 2. Benediction is your 100% healing ability. It has a fairly long cooldown so I have seen players go either way with this. They either let the tank health drop while focusing DPS first, and then as soon as it hits around 15 to 20%, they use Benediction for a complete heal. Or I have seen players hold on to it for an oh crap heal for safety. I am sure that many will chime in in the comment section, so if you want to look at what other people have to say, you can just look down there. Just follow your heart on this one. I personally weave it into just my general healing as it's an OGCD, and if I cast that instead of a GCD heal, I will. Medic 2 can be quite controversial for White Mage, and the reason being as it's a party-wide regen similar to Astrologian's Aspected Helios. The difference in my opinion about this spell is that the white mage has very few OGCD regens comparatively, meaning I utilize this ability quite a lot actually. Generally two regens on a tank is very powerful and will give you a ton of slack as a new healer and is generally really easy to do with other jobs. White mage does need a GCD heal to get that though due to not having that much utility. So this mixed with regen usually can keep the tank health pretty high without having to really focus on it. When your tank is pulling and you've casted your first holy, you can then cast Medica 2 in between the first and second holy. This will allow you to get the stun out, let it run out, party wide regen, and then apply another stun immediately. This is what I've always recommended to new healers and they usually bring a sigh of relief to have the kind of pressure taken off of big pools. This will also stop healers from spamming Cure 1 in 60 plus dungeon, which happens all too often. One regen and a Medica 2 for a double regen will keep a very healthy amount of slack until you feel comfortable just using one regen and other OGCD heals. Everyone has to start somewhere, and I think this is a better place to start than just spamming Cure 1 or Cure 2 in dungeons. Next up, Aflatus Solus. Now we finally have our job abilities. Now there are some things here you're going to want to remember when utilizing White Mage's job abilities specifically, as they are different than the other three healers. White Mage's job abilities are GCDs, which means they reset the global timer. This means that they take away from damaging your enemies. Now with that being said, you'll want to use these instead of Cure 2 abilities at every angle. Aflatus Solus practically is just a free Cure 2. Later on, we can actually get some use out of these, but for now, just use Aflatus Solus in place of Cure 2 if you need to. But a regen and a Medica 2 as your main regens will be way superior at this point. 
Asylum is a great ability for casual players as this with the regen would be a pretty good source of healing for your tank and party. Now to effectively use it, you'll want to wait until the tank stops moving or as you get more skilled with healers, you can place where you know generally where the tank can't stop after the second pull of the trash mob. Now you also at later levels get a recovery boost to healing actions. At this point, I can't actually find any data to what that means. Is that single target GCDs or is that all healing actions, even OGCDs? I'm sure someone can answer that in the comment section down below. Either way, the wide range AOE is great for your second region and should be kept on cooldowns at all times during battles. A size. Now this is another awesome skill that should have charges in my personal opinion. This is our ability to get MP back, damage enemies, and heal allies. It really is an all-in-one ability. You should always prioritize this for the damage and not for the healing as it's our only other damage ability than our GCD single target in AoE at this time. Don't hold to heal the party for this, just use it whenever it pops up. White Mage's Thin Air ability did have a few changes for Endwalker, where it used to be a duration, which seemed really amazing paired with Presence of Mine, but now these are charges in order to make one spell MP cost zero. Now we can use this in a couple of different ways. One obvious way is to pair it with Resurrection, which will make resing a dead teammate absolutely free. The other way is pair this with Medica 2, which costs 1000 MP and you can make that free. The way I use this personally is always keeping one charge. If there's a charge, I use it on a GCD damage ability or if I'm going to use Medica 2. I keep one for the free res at any given time. So I would say don't just let it sit there. Use it for the ability and for that I keep it on my main cross hotbar at the bottom near Medica 2. Tetragrammaton. Practically a free, slightly less powerful cure 2. It's an OGCD, which means prioritize this over Aflatus Solus since it won't reset your GCD timer. Now at this point, we have a lot of new skills, so let's go over the prioritization for level 60 content. The pools will be the same as before. Tank pulls mob, regen the tank, dot each enemy as you're running. Now you can place an asylum bubble where the tank's gonna stop. Holy enemies, a size, holy, 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 heal is necessary. But this way, if the tank has pulled a big group, you can stun them as soon as possible in a size to recover any damage the tank has taken. Once you get the hang of it, it really works out well for each pull, and the cooldowns are usually done by the time you go for your next pull anyway. Let's move on to Divine Benison. This is your basically go-to ability now with regen, as it provides a shield equal to a 500 potency heal. So this paired with regen can be a great damage mitigator at the start of each pool. Plenary Indulgence. This is an interesting ability and will have better use later on, but as of now, if you're going to cast a Medica 2, just cast this ability first in order to get a little more healing out of it. Medica 2 would be the best choice out of all of the other abilities at the moment since Medica and Cure 3 are just base AoE heals with no regen. So if you're going to cast a GCD heal, you might as well apply a regen anyway. Aflatus Misery. Now we finally get some sort of positive feedback for using our GCD job abilities, Aflatus Solus. This is a DPS nuke for White Mage, but not necessarily used in the way you might think. When you use a Lily, which you use by using either Aflatus Solus or a later ability, Aflatus Rapture, you will get a Blood Lily. Now, DPS-wise, this isn't optimal to use a Flatus Solus only to get Blood Lilies during battle. Think of this as just a way to recoup for healing your teammates. I personally don't prioritize Lilies just to get the Blood Lily, but dump them in between trash pulls to open up the next boss battle or next trash pool with a huge damage nuke. The next ability actually makes it a little more usable for me personally during battle. Aflatus Rapture. This is a GCD AoE heal for your teammates. Again, because it's a GCD, we don't necessarily prioritize this, but it is a great ability to pair with Plenary Indulgence instead of Medica 2. The reason being is that you can work towards Blood Lilies if you're going to cast a Medica 2. Now that we have a few more OGCD heals and regens, Aflatus Rapture becomes the better option here. So in battle, it would be Plenary Indulgence, Aflatus Rapture to acquire a Blood Lily. 
It is a super great way to recoup damage with that nuke that you're losing by casting a GCD heal. So a Flatus Rapture Plenary combo is less powerful than a Medica 2, but can be a DPS recoup combo. Temperance, the most beautiful ability ever. Angel Wings for a damage mitigation of 10% and increased magic potency by 20%. Just a great way to mitigate damage and increase your healing potency for spells. We then have Aquaville, which is practically a tank buster ability. Damage mitigation of 15%, which is great for tank pulls and tank busters during battle. I use this as often as possible since it only has a 60 second cooldown and pretty much keep it up all times during trash pulls. Last, certainly but not least, Liturgy of the Bell. This is our new level 90 ability. This will place five stacks of Liturgy of the Bell to yourself only. When you yourself take damage, you will heal you and your party members for 400 potency, which is practically a Medica. Now, this trick with this is you have to be the one taking the damage, so this is very useful for multiple room ride attacks or stacking multiple attacks like Bahamut's Akmorn. Even if you only use one or two stacks, the rest will just get translated into a heal for the party for whatever is left, so still useful as a delayed heal. I use this mostly on bosses as trash pulls go too quickly and mostly focus on the tank, but can fit this in whenever you need a little extra healing. And this is White Mage. For a job so simple, comparatively, there's a lot of things that you kind of have to pay attention to while playing since their job abilities are GCDs instead of OGCDs like the other three healers. It's an extremely powerful healing class, but may lack a certain flair that the other healer roles have come to be known as. Comment down below if you yourself really enjoy White Mage or if you'll be trying out the other classes instead. I will have all my practical healing guys linked in the description box if you'd like to check those out as well. I want to thank you guys for watching this video and a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters as your continued support really helps me to put out long and intensive videos like this. If you want to support or link with me in my public discord, then you can click on the link tree link down below in the description box. If you want to watch my full library of Endwalker guides and tutorials, then you can click here.